I like to wear dirty clothes and work with my hands and I get some kind of a weird sense of power by making something. This is how I'm good at expressing myself and I am driven to come in here every day and when I'm not in the studio, I'm not happy. I'm Ann Wood and I am a sculptor and a painter. I live here in Galveston, work here in Galveston, and I've been making installations for as long as I've really been making art. The nature of installation is such that a lot of times you don't ever see it until a couple days before the opening in its full form. I think there's always a process to the work, but I also tend to sit on ideas for a very long time. Like I've had the idea of making this nest, this house out of doll hair, probably since I was an undergrad, but I've never actually made it. So it's something that I've kind of been sitting on and waiting for the right opportunity. It needs a really big space. The space at Amset is huge. The sheer size of it was really a challenge and exciting to me. NEST is going to be an installation that you can actually walk underneath and experience. So it's almost like a canopy. You'll be able to look up and see through it. It'll be very delicate and translucent, but there's lots of flowers, fake hair, wire, and it's dipped in this foam that makes it look kind of candy coated. So I also want it to feel kind of like it was made by some maybe housewife that went over the edge or something. I kind of always have been an attraction repulsion person. Like, I like to make things that are very pretty, but then have this kind of sinister underbelly or a creepy factor to them. And I think that's kind of why I do a lot of dead animals and use taxidermy mannequins as are kind of morbid to me. But even a thing like nest, I feel it's almost like a baited trap or a carnivorous plant. I think a lot about fairy tales and myths and how those teach us to live a certain way. There are really these interesting stories. Everyone gets married at the end, at least in the Disney version, and it's great, but if you really look at the subtext, it's horrific. Hurricane Ike destroyed my studio. So when I went into my new studio, I had a Sharpie and a piece of paper, and that was it. So it was a real long kind of process to get started again, but it really changed what I was doing. I hadn't made a 2D like painting-ish thing in 15 years, maybe 10 years, and I just decided I was gonna do drawings. And then I started doing the drawings and I was like, no, this isn't like gooey enough, it's not colorful enough. So then I embroidered the drawing and then I was like, well now I need to dip it in plastic. So that was kind of the birth of these large wall pieces. I'm really interested in Baroque drama and the over-the-top, just theatricality of the work. I also wanted to reference Dutch and Spanish still lives that have a lot of dead animals and stuff in them. This lion right here is like almost the exact pose of a lion in like a famous Rubens painting. I'm making a fountain. I want it to feel like a town square kind of monument. I'm really interested in monuments and big, large kind of public sculpture that's usually bronze, usually has some animals, usually very manly, and I want to make them look kind of like these big super cakes. I want to take things that are traditionally masculine and give them some girl power. The idea of masculine and feminine is important even in the formal qualities in the media that I use. I use a lot of thread, push pins, different sewing notions, scrapbooking materials, you know, things that are traditionally considered low art women's work and I try to kind of elevate it. But I use a lot of industrial materials too. I mean, there's a lot of different plastics and stuff that I mix up and use and there's a lot of building that happens. So that is really important to me, that dichotomy between masculine and feminine. I think that I come back to the same themes over and over and have since, you know, I was in high school drawing. I was reading a catalog about the work of an artist, Miwa Yanagi. She said something about how she feels like as an artist she goes out in this ship every couple months, kind of goes to see where things are, has a shipwreck, and then washes back up at the same place, and then goes out in a different direction, you know, does her thing, and then comes back to the same place. And I. 
I thought that that was amazing. Like I kept reading it because that's totally how I feel. Like the same theme is being explored in different ways. I don't like things that are real obvious. I am an artist because of the different layers. Like it's an onion, right? And you can peel away all the different layers. There's the iconography, the symbolism. There's the cool history that you can go into. There's the formal aspects. So that kind of all plays together and it's like a really big puzzle that just like excites me a lot.